Hey out there in YouTube land, this is uh, Kuda Slayer once again, uh, aka Daytime Number of the Beast. Um, I decided I want to do another episode of um, converting uh, you know, your favorite anime or media franchise over to Mechton Zeta. And uh, today I thought I, was, I would pick something that would be kind of simple kind of because I want to build up complexity as we each new, with each new episode but um, admittedly this one that I picked today came out be a little bit more complex than I thought it would be uh, so uh, I'm gonna admit that what I'm gonna say can go either two different ways um, and of course I'm gonna go with what I think is the right opinion of course that's just me um, so um, if you have a better idea how to do it, I would love to hear it. Uh, because even I have to admit, this was a bit of a head scratcher, and I got plenty of scratch up here. Uh, so anyway, um, today's episode is going to be about a rather po com a popular uh, anime franchise, of Pat Labor. Um, again, I've had trouble with um, copyright strikes for whatever reason, so I'm still stuck on using still photos to kind of get my point across. So, uh, until we get that fixed, um, work with it what we have as it falls apart around us. Um, and for those that don't know, Pat Labor uh, came out was about 1989, if I'm not mistaken, and it's basically a police theme show where there are, there was this constraint in the at the time the future 1998 there was a future construction boom that was going to happen in tokyo with what they referred to as project babylon which where they're going to uh, basically reclaim a lot of land from the sea and build out and also destroy a lot large parts of uh, old tokyo um, and uh and as part of the needs for you know more material and and be able to uh you know do uh, more work they came up with these machines called labors which are as you can guess by now are basically humanoid shapish um bulldozers they do a lot of welding they move equipment around uh, a lot of them are designed to work underwater um, and as a result of these new machines being created there was a new case, a uh, class of crime referred to as labor crime, where basically, um, you know, labors can get stolen. They uh, go out of control. Um, pe uh, workers can go on strike with them, or uh, there's a couple of instances of terrorists using them. Um, Pat labor is, um, <laughs> I said it. Uh, Pat labor is, rather interesting it's one of the few anime franchises that actually are kind of was if i remember right owned by the artists there were five artists that came together under the name headgear and they basically are the car if i'm not mistaken they are the copyright owners for pat labor and um and even, even though every time there's say like a top five or top ten list it seemed like Pat Labor, despite all its qual quality animation and everything they put into it, it's always kind of like the runt litter. And it's, in many ways, a lot of fans have to admit that, um, you know, it's, the show is never, I will think, it's not so much a show has not gotten, you know, exposure. There's like three movies, two OVAs, uh, two TV series, uh, to, uh, I think both of them totaled over somewhere over 50 episodes several video games um, you know there is no lacking of um, material to see but for some odd reason it's um, as great of a show as it is it's you know again it's, it's a, the livable runt of the litter you know it's you know it's always managed to make just make the list uh, even though it, the effort it, the effort that was put into it, you know, the results are pretty good. Uh, let's see, um, kind of get some general shots of it. Um, uh, 
And here's one of the construction mecca here. Here's one of the police mecca in question. Um, you know, I need to refer to that later. Uh, some of the novel designs, the features about these machines are kind of neat. Um, when you actually take a look at these machines, they're not exactly that big. In, in fact, um, most look at the most of the stats, they um, usually most are around six to 10 ton, uh, maybe at most 10 ton range. Um, even though they're like uh, eight, and a lot of them are barely over eight meters tall. So, you know, we're not talking about extremely uh, giant units, uh, but as you can you see here, uh, this is kind of one of the features of the cockpit. There's actually kind of two modes that the cockpit can be in. Um, either kind of like, um, they just call this the convertible mo mode, where the pilot's head can be uh, outside of the armored shell or protection of the uh, body so they can either, you know, communicate with people outside, uh, not if their sensors are taken out, you know, various different reasons, uh, usually for plot, um, plot purposes. Uh, but I was always kind of one thing I loved about the styling. This, this the way the, 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 you know, you just see how big this machine really is. It almost, it's almost designed like a, uh, like an F1 racer, you know, just, just the way that the, you know, the pilot seems to exist in relationship to the rest of the, um, to the mecha. So I, that's always been kind of one of, one of my favorite details about um, about the designs. Let's see. Uh, again, here's kind of one of the basic labor units. Um, this is typical construction. Um, they're basically are walking bulldozers for for all intents and purposes. Uh, I'll put that down away. And um, oh yeah, since it is uh, June and uh, June today, this episode's uh, patronizer is uh, Wayland Utah uh, Corporation. Just one show of the colors. Um, if you've seen the last episode I did of this with uh, Genlock, this is the basic outline of how I'm going to be doing the sh uh, today's show. Um, you're going to what is the concept or the, the foundational details, uh, where are the mecha sticks, um, are there any existing rules that support this, uh, homebrew, um, if necessary. Um, and of course, again, there's always room for tangents. So, you know, uh, let me double check since I am rambling here. Um, anyway, uh, kind of, okay, okay, um, you know, basically we kind of went over the basic, uh, concept of the, uh, what the show is about. It's basically Mecca with an inside a police force. And it's kind of interesting is that this is, there, this is not like the basic police force. This is a special, a uh, unit, kind of like more like SWAT than, um, and say your daily, you know, police unit. Um, they are called in, in the, you know, they, they get the call and, or the mecha symbol is shining in the air and they have to load up, they load up their mecha and uh, these special built carriers, which will, car you know, carry them down the road and they'll deploy at the site and deal with whatever the issue is. Um, and say, so I think, I'm, okay. One detail I, I'm gonna I forgot to cover is that um, to kind of simplify things, I'm basically gonna be trying to use the um, first movie as as an example because there is kind of a bit of a divergence between the TV show and the movies. Uh, the TV show kind of gets a little silly, kind of branches out into more uh, personal um, storylines and such like. One, um, one the no, one the uh, kind of main characters has to go around getting everyone's uh, lunch list together, and every time about halfway through or near the end, she forgets what what she's supposed to get everybody and has to start all over. It's kind of more of a comedy episode, but um, that's just an example of how much of a uh, divergent is from the movies. While the movies have more uh, serious plot points, um, in this case. Uh, I'll I'll talk about the movie late the first movie later so 
spoilers, of course. But um, I again, I used the the, the first movie as the base example of how to uh, plan everything out. Um, back online, um, basically, you know, this is a realistic mecha setting. There's really nothing too too far out. Um, most of the mechs are powered by battery, power cable, or diesel generators. Um, we never see anything that looks like it's a hot system, you know, that will easily explode or, or whatever, and yet somehow gives them a lot more power um, as, a, as a cost benefit. Uh, energy weapons are super rare. There is at least one occurrence I'm aware of in the TV show where a unit does have a laser, but it's, that's extremely rare. In the storyline, so um, energy weapons, no, not really seen. Um, there is hardly any flight-enabled labors, although there's a very important plot point or plot story that does involve a flight-capable um, labor labor machine, but that's a special case. Um, throughout the show, you never seen one any mecha with um, rocket-propelled jumps or um, you do anything kind of that outlandish as you want, may want to call it. Uh, cockpits, we talked about that. The, um, the Ingram models uh, that the police use tend you know, have the combination canopy or armor, depending on you know, convertible or, or you know, clo you know, closed, clamshell closed up um, modes. Um, you know that they're the only ones while the other machines are generally um, mostly canopy um, let's see uh, hydro higher level hydraulics it seems to be kind of hinted at uh, from time to time um, in the first movie even though you don't really see any kind of um, like internal computer systems or anything that would oh no it's not a detail tangent um, one little thing you don't see too, anything that would resemble an artificial intelligence but in the first movie there's a plot point where that kind of seems to be there so um, a while I'm on the subject one of the other kind of details that they mention is that a lot of these labor machines can be personalized for a, a particular pilot, and that program can be removed and, and, and uh, you know uploaded and removed uh, via kind of a CD or DVD. I don't remember exactly what the format was from the from the show. They kind of they sure make it look like a like a CD of some kind, but um, but. It's kind of a kind of an interesting detail you don't see too often in um, too many shows. Um, as a plot point that could be used where someone one pilot's using some other pilot's uh, program settings, uh, but it's, I think that's kind of a workaround if you're using like the um, uh, Katata um, feature that's talked about in Mech Ten Zero. Um, I'm not a particular fan of that format or that feature, but um, that would be kind of something to consider. Uh, let's see. Um, in general, the mecha shtick, um, if you haven't seen the last show, a uh, shtick is basically a, th it trans it's from the older theater, kind of back to the vaudeville days. Uh, basically it means a thing, a gimmick. Um, something a comedian or actor might do to get a resp quick response out of the audience like um, custard cream pie would be a gimmick or shtick um, and, ba and basically it is you know something that's you know guffinite or whatever that's unique to the show and it's a trick but anyway um, uh, from basically all labors are mainly designed um, there's not too much detail in these machines um, you don't get too many you know fancy fancy features or anything that you know that's too over the top 
like except for you know like characters or character models um, the star mecha which are the police which is the police force um, everyone use all the machines uh, especially the ingrams um, use a kind of scaled up handheld versions of uh, standard police equipment like there's a revol like a one-handed revolver uh, two-handed shotgun uh, there's a stun baton and kind of a uh, buckler shield um, that uh, the units will use. I actually kind of see one right there. Um, you know, and that's and that, that's kind of one of the, the sort of things I respect about the show is that it is minimalist at best. You know, you, you, there's nothing too crazy about it or over top most of it is the most of the, the, the shows are story driven and um, the, and a lot of times the simplicity of the mecha is kind of what really brings out the characters and what they can and cannot do now I'm going to get to the part where I hate the most um, and it's kind of where I spent most of my time um, dealing with issues let's see uh first off while i was uh, doing research on this i did find there's a um does appear to be a couple of different wikia out there um at least one or both appear to be to be kind of quote unquote abandoned neither of them have been updated in quite some time um and kind of one of the annoying things about it is there's not really a whole lot of information on these sites um a later website I did find gives a lot more information but as we're about to go into um, there's not really much for us to work with let's see um, the one website I really did like I uh, found I liked is uh, patlabor.info this seems to be kind of real more a comprehensive uh, style of website uh, I mean they cover pretty much most in most of the details you can ever want for the show and this is kind of displays a uh, this is kind of a bit of a stumbling block a lot of times if you come across if you have a certain franchise you want to emulate or whatever um, it's not uncommon to come across a lot of vague if not nebulous information and this is kind of really sometimes where I like to try to go to to kind of get a rough idea of how I can play with this and um, I'm going to explain the two theories that I have on how to do this show uh, first off as I said you have the, you have at least three different um, issues when it comes to um, kind of setting these guys out uh, first off height is eight meters which is not too bad of a number to work with uh, mechton wise you have weight which you haven't caught up with me so far uh, this is kind of one real problem to work around um, also there's some issues of lifting capacity uh, because that the lifting capacity kind of there's a um, there's a couple of scenes where you see some um, units uh like pick up one another uh easily and kind of break one over a knee there's a particular scene of the, of the first movie where you see that happen but of course that's an extreme case but a lot of times um these kind of number the lifting capacity doesn't really match up with what i would consider uh the proper scale to use this in um like i said the weight six tons for an ingram now, that's pretty low for um, for a scale, like say a scale one mech. Uh, six tons kind of suggests there's a total of just twelve kills in general, um, and again the very the variation between different uh, units you don't get really too much. There's like a that's the lift capacity. Okay, they don't give weight on that guy. Um, uh, this was the python they're heavier close to the closer to eight tons uh the peacemaker was not a six tonner 
the construction max of see 7.8 or 8.2 but uh, 12 tons okay we're trying to get some heavier uh six seven uh nine 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 ten another eight toner uh you don't get too many varying numbers and that's kind of irritating in many ways um uh, especially since the way mecton is um set up to kind of your mobility is initially set up on um on your weight um and since there's not really too much okay i've got a hefty boy here at 14 pounds i mean i'm sorry 14 tons um but that's kind of the extreme so you're not really you know we don't really have much fair variance to deal with um and also when you watch um watch a show um there's you know you have, you bring the mecca you know your the police mecca in to stop the labor um you know a lot of times you'll see them are in confined spaces like there was uh, one of the first ones in the movie you see um a labor kind of stomping through an old village or i call it a village but most of them are old um, japanese homes and they're all wooden and such and so it's kind of walking through like it's walking through a bunch of bushes so it's not it's just leaving a trail of destruction and uh, through all these old de 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 um, decaying um, wooden houses um, and so um, and then when the, the police mecca come in they they what they tend to do is either you know try to stun stun the labor stop it from moving or kind of wrestle it um, that um you, you know you try to figure out you know how much um how you know how much um game balance you really want in this set in this kind of setting and and what these kind of numbers are thinking there's not really anything you could that's existing in mac 10 that would um kind of support these numbers especially the weight um kind of rule the general rule of thumb in mecton is uh even though you can set artificially set the height yourself um normally it's like torso kills times 1.5 meters uh you get your height so like eight meters you're looking at you know roughly around five five slightly five and a half kills for for a torso and for you know something that barely, you know, just wh barely weighs uh, 10 tons you only got like another five kills for your limbs and an armor um, and the way some of these mechs can duel it out it um, you know it, it, some there's a little bit this is kind of where you know you as a GM you kind of hit the um, you know who what is running the game are your rules running the game or are you as a gm running the game so i kind of came up with two possible theories um the first one which is the one i don't like the most is that um, all the mecha are basically giant road striders uh, road strikers uh basically one-fifth scale compared to the uh, normal one scale the max and you basically build everything with um, roughly half i'm sorry um super or mega heavy servos um and just basically you know shrink them shrink them down to um kind of fit, them, fit closer uh, to the weights like a um let's see what i figured out using all mega heavy servos there's like 801 kills before scaling and then when you scale it down so it's, it's like eight kills total which you, you can try and spread about, spread about but i didn't again i don't really like how that played out um what the theory that i kind of like the most and it of course it's mine so i like it more uh, would be to build everything at one scale 
keep it small at say round striker 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 level um, maybe delving into occasionally in some limbs like uh, maybe a super you know striker body striker legs um, super light arms or actually more in this case maybe striker for him uh, or in this or maybe super light for like in this case of uh, this model um, and then when you decide to start doing armor um, I would uh, use more maybe some lower levels but more refined types to kind of uh, keep the because um, you can see, sort of see you know when they get you know these units get punched they can um, you know just to see the armor being bent, bent up is still kind of absorbing damage uh, I don't you know it's not entirely perfect theory of how to do it but um, it sort of seems to work from what I can tell so you know that's my general gist and I'm gonna kind of that's the theory I'm be working on from here on uh, one of the things is since there's not really too much uh, differences in um, maneuver value I would argue for uh, monocule construction you know since that's um, kind of gives you some bonus you know some negative modifiers for um, making your mech a little slower but a little cheaper at the same time um, let's see where I... anyway again this is kind of like um, in the general lock episode um, I would push for let's activate and um, you know giving mecha, mecha pilots and more act actions than usual uh, there are rules in the uh, mech 10 archive for um, for using power cables to supply power to a mech uh, there are some additional ones for power cells um, the, men, uh, the, one, uh, the what I mentioned right here is actually describe what the power cells are like themselves if you want to get more detail oriented um, I mean it's not exactly necessary it doesn't I don't really see it happening I didn't really see it happen in the original show at all um, but just another one uh, but overall there's you know as minimalist as uh, as the design as the designs are and how most of the action that happens in the show are um, you know more character driven I, I don't really see much more need for adding more rules uh, that's, uh, well, I guess well, I'm at it I'll, I can ex I'll explain the first movie uh, kind of get some of the deep kind of reason out some of the details I had here um, in the first movie there's a kind of a little growing conspiracy where they notice that there's some of these labors that are going you know out of control for no real apparent reason and as the story goes they kind of discover that there is what appears to be some kind of virus that's been released into the operating system of all the laborers uh, including the police uh, uh, the pat labor or special vehicle divisions of uh, machines and this is set off by a certain high-pitched um, whistle that's set off by certain wind speeds and as uh, the story progressed they find out that the programmer had they originally came up with the operating system this supposed genius had put the virus in and had it spread out through all the labors and that the at a certain air sp wind speed during a hurricane uh, the plat special platform they have out in the middle of Tokyo Bay where they service and store most of the labors when they're not in use um, will resonate at the certain r uh, wind speed and will start causing other buildings to resonate and spread this uh, frequency across uh, all Tokyo to um, you know cause all the labors to go crazy and so um, part of the plot is the the special vehicle for, uh, division will take their units you know beside before protecting them from the virus they'll go and disable or actually collapse the um, the big um, floating Actually, no, it's, not, it's a, the island where the um, you know basically the 
you know, center of all the labor construction and everything's at and cause it to collapse so that it won't resonate um, and cause all the, the you know, all the construction buildings to do the same things. So they to stop it right there. But when they get there, uh, the wind speeds already got high enough where that the laborers are there have already started going acting crazy. So they you have all these machines acting like a zombie horde. And then uh, at the same time, there is a prototype of uh, Ingram known as a Zero, which is a uh, special close combat mod modified uh, version um, that's also on the it's it's been effect is you know it's been affected by the virus and uh, is kind of running loose, so it's hunting them as well. So they're as they're running around doing the um, you know get to the point where they can collapse the structure, they have to stop everything. Um, and there's a um, climax at the end where the Z Zero and the, one of the main characters uh, square off. So that's kind of where I got a lot of my you know, information or details I wrote down to use for um, kind of writing all this out. Um, again, um, this was kind of a rather interesting exercise. Um, Personally, um, you know, I can see this go be going either way. You know, they're do like really small scale one mechs or do giant road strikers. Again, I don't like the giant road striker um, theory because um, uh, it, it kind of seems like even though it, some of the numbers balance out close to the, the fluff the fluff stats, um, I I I didn't really like how how everything was meshing together. Um, so what I would propose would be to use small scale, scale one uh, mecha and um, have kind of two sets of stats. There's you kind of fluff stats, you know, some where you say it's eight meters tall all in ways only raise, you know, six, seven tons. And then you have the gaming stats where these are the mechanic, good mechanic stats, which determine how everything you know will react interact with each other because like I say if you see these uh, police units in action um, you know they try to do everything they can to not damage um, other buildings or injure other people and so a lot of times what they do is either you know stun the disable the mech as the, the problem mech as much as possible uh, either by you know wrestling melee attacks stun attacks or even dismembering in like uh see like in, uh, like this particular uh, scene from the movie uh they actually try to remove the uh, back uh, back mounted uh, diesel generator that was running the unit uh, so you know a lot of a lot of unconventional means and uh you're kind of limited by what you do in the air so it's really forces your players to kind of not think about you know you, you certainly in this kind of setting um, you really can't uh, you know be a murder hobo or whatever um, although that does bring up a third third three I didn't think about um, again uh, as I've said before in the last episode when I kind of explained everything um, a third theory which I would use and I'm sorry for being like Agatha Christie and dropping that at the last minute um, the third theory would be is I would if you your players you know ask you to run a setting like this um, <clears throat> or even run story uh, I would do kind of a variation on the um, my uh, small scale one and simply just um, design your mechs in the spirit of the um, of the setting you know do whatever uh, do whichever way you want you can you know use larger scale mechs um, and you know just generate your own different types of stats for it um, but you know that's kind of similar to the scale one theory but you know if you you're kind of like me and you looked at all these numbers and kind of get, got a little frustrated um, 
that probably would be the other way, the other way to go. You know, do it in the spirit of the setting. Um, not you know, not be hampered by because a lot of these numbers that uh, are given are usually just there to fill pages on a book. They're not really there to explain everything that happens in the show uh, to more you know one degree or another. But anyway, um, if you have um, another suggestion on how to do it, um, feel free to uh, drop in the comments below. Um, again. The main, the main, my main two theories are probably how I would suggest going, but uh, again, as with as many pe different people are as they are out there, um, there's always another answer. So that's kind of the, you know, kind of what kind of gives me kind of hope about um, working on such projects like this. But anyway, um, I think that covers just about everything. Um, if you haven't seen Pat Labor please watch it it's a great show it is worthy of definitely being included in your anime collection if you can get any of the episodes um i think most of the movies have actually i know the first two movies have been released given english releases and i know the t the, at least the first tv show has been released um, on dvd um so you know add it to your collection watch it You'll appreciate, uh, you know, definitely the effort and, uh, and everything that went into creating the show. So, anyway, um, I'll be doing another episode sometime fairly soon. I already have at least one suggestion on the list that I'll be looking at. Um, but uh, I'll see you all next time. Cheers.